Welcome back to our Total Sense Bite Size episodes. I'm Tom Hensky, and I'm here to help parents teach their kids about money. Welcome back. Today we have Armand Rusta from KidCoin. Ironically, what brought us together had nothing to do with financial literacy. It had all to do with soccer because he was an avid soccer player back in the day. Columbia University, academic all Ivy, complete stud athlete. Uh, but then he basically veered off and became an inventor and entrepreneur. Now he runs a venture building think tank called B Labs and has developed a portfolio of tech startups. On the financial literacy front, though, he's been a longtime advocate of skills and education for K through 12. He spent 20 years in financial literacy and actually started a platform called 401k Kid, which I love that name. That was like the be all end all of cool, catchy names for financial literacy. But KidCoin, which we're going to talk about today, is an app for both adults and kids, which educates them and helps families interact with money. So welcome, Armand. How are you? Doing great, Tom. Thanks for the intro. Feeling good to be here. Nice to uh, reconnect with you as well. And, and I love what you're doing with Total Sense. Good to be on. Thanks, thanks. I appreciate the plug. I appreciate it. So, so let's hop right in. What's KidCoin? And tell me, what was your motivation for creating it? Absolutely. Like you mentioned in the intro, Tom, um, I started a company years ago called 401 Kid. I really see KidCoin as the evolution of that. The way 401 Kid came about was you mentioned my background being a student athlete playing soccer, went to Columbia University, great educational experience and, and young, young individuals' life experience. But what I felt I missed coming out of college at the age of 22 getting my first job, living in the big city, was how to manage a checkbook, <laughs> how to handle my first paycheck and, and understand how I needed to do you know, basic uh, adulting, so to speak. Uh, you learn all this great stuff in school and, and how to balance education, athletics, and all those, all those challenges that are great experiences. But one thing I found at that moment in time, I realized I didn't really get was that financial education. So it kind of stuck in me as a gap, a gap in this educational and life experience. And that's where the initial incentive came to conceive 401 Kid, um, which has evolved over the years into, into KidCoin, which is basically a tool and a whole frame of uh, products that would help young people and the people that guide them, which are obviously the parents, to um, to basically fill in that gap, that that kind of missing core life skill that we don't really have a lot of classes for in school, and uh, we may learn from our parents. We, we do learn from our parents one way or another. Those lessons uh, are sometimes good, sometimes maybe not as thorough, depending on how the parents decide to take that process on. So tell me, in uh, the pre-read that I was doing before our interview, is Kidcoin a cryptocurrency? So KidCoin at present is not a cryptocurrency. Uh, it is in our roadmap and in our plans to, um, to add a component in which involves cryptocurrency. Of course, it's, it's a complicated topic and it's not easy to launch a, a new cryptocurrency. There's regulations and a lot of things that go behind that. Uh, so we do have that in, in mind, but at present, the first version of the app is more of an in-family form of rewards. Uh, or funny money, as you may call it. The parents determine the value and determine how the kids can earn the coins or the rewards uh, based on doing chores and errands and things of that nature. And then the parents also work with the kids to determine how they can redeem the kid coins for, for the real life things that they want to do or they want to buy. So it's kind of a controlled form of uh, in-house family payment system. Uh, in its present form. And in the future, we're planning to extend it and add cryptocurrency uh, features. So while we're talking about cryptocurrency, there's a lot going on in the media about crypto. Uh, any thoughts you have on where it is today and where it goes from here? For sure. 
for sure. I think uh, definitely uh, the term I like best, you know, when describing blockchain and cryptocurrency and NFTs is really, I like the Web3 concept because I do believe just like we had the internet, you know, 20 some odd plus years ago and, and people doubted that it would be so as pervasive as it is today. Remember, there was a point in time where people didn't want to do online banking and e-commerce was, is it going to survive or not? People like to go into stores. And anytime there's a new technology or new breakthroughs, there's always resistance because there's an old way of doing things uh, that, that kind of people just aren't, they're set in their ways. And I see a lot of that going on in this crypto blockchain space. Whenever there's a new technology or a new tool, there's also a lot of hype. There's also a lot of people that rush in, like a gold rush, into a space that don't necessarily understand it or have the best interests of others in mind. So I think we're seeing a lot of that, uh, which is why there's a lot of, you know, even confusion in the media and a lot of even bad actors in the space. I think it happens when something is new and when there's not as much regulation. So my, I'm very bullish overall. Obviously, it's a crypto winter and it's like a downturn at the moment and there's a lot of questions. Uh, and I just see it as uh, personally and professionally, we're, we're definitely making um, bets on cryptocurrency. I think NFTs is another component there that's a new way to transact that can be utilized very creatively uh, by companies and it's already being done so, as we see a lot of all the big banks, all the big financial players, and the big companies, whatever they say publicly, behind the scenes are investing millions and millions, if not billions, in this space because they understand that the, the underlying technology, as well as the concept, has uh, viability. How long it takes for that to kind of move into the mainstream and find its place, it's really up to us people like myself and companies like ours that are actually, we're not sitting there watching and waiting. We're actually part of the front lines of trying to build all, all effective use cases and ways to actually utilize Bitcoin and Ethereum and maybe KidCoin and other cryptos that, that are soon to follow. Great. So you'd mentioned KidCoin. So let's get back on that one. Take us through the parent and child experience once they get to your website. Great. So uh, yeah, kidcoin.com is the main website where you can get uh, the basic information. There's also an app available in both app stores, iOS and, and Google slash Android. And we do get that question a lot. So it's a good one. Is this for the parents or the kids? And the answer is clearly both. This is really a, it takes a village uh, to raise a child type of concept. And, um, but what we do for the children's protection is the parents have to initiate. So really, when you come into the app, the adult sets up the account, and then they add the children. And then they can invite, if it's, let's say, the father comes in, they invite the mother as a fellow admin. If they you know, obviously share the same kids, or if there's nephews and nieces, you can add other children that aren't your own direct children in as well. So you, each person, each adult gets to start building a family network and inviting other friends and relatives in that may want to support the child. Again, it takes a village to, to help educate and support and encourage and teach that child how to start managing their, let's not even say resources, but their responsibilities because the app really becomes like a habit builder for the kids. So there's an interface and there's a different interface for the parents. And then when the kids sign in, either through their own device, if they have a device, um, but since we deal with a lot of younger kids who may not have their own phone, they can actually use the parent's device and the parent can switch to like the child mode, choose the child, and then the child gets to see their quote unquote bank, how much kid coin they have, what their chores are, et cetera. So there's an interface for both, and, um, and that's something that allows the parent to kind of control and manage and kind of monitor the experience that the, their children are having. Okay, and what are they managing? Is this allowance, or what's going on uh, once it gets going? So allowance is 
one of the first basic components. You know, the adults can set a weekly or a monthly allowance, and the allowance is specifically in KidCoin. So every new account and account holder gets, we give them for free, you know, 100 KidCoin, and here you go. You, you start and you have a way to get started with the process, and that's for free. Uh, and then we have um, premium features where if the parent and the child and there's multiple children uh, start really wanting to move a lot of circulation of the kid coins, they're going to need to kind of reload their wallet and add more kid coin, which then comes with a cost. If they want to have more kid coin, that will be a paid uh, paid in feature. Um, but to your question, yes, allowance is one of the first things they can do. The parent and the child can suggest or add chores and then assign kid coin value to those chores. So fix your bed, get two kid coin, feed the fish. I'm thinking of my son, Aiden, who's seven, and all the things he's always negotiating with me. He wants 20 kid coins for doing basic things. I'm like, no, you'll get, you'll get five kid coins for that. And then in the app, you could not only mark them as done, so it gives the child the responsibility to, again, track their habits, if, whether they're daily habits or weekly. The parent can set rules on how many times the child can do that particular chore. So chores is definitely one of the key features. Um, and, and you could also require the kid to take a picture. If you, Hey, fixed your bed, send me the picture and then I can approve it. <laughs> proof, huh? You Bitcoin. need, you require proof. That's tough. You're a tough parent in your household. Gosh, I'm glad I didn't grow up with you. Well, you know, that's optional for the parent. Uh, I know that my son tries to sneak away and get away with things and say, yeah, yeah, I did that. So I say, okay, did you show me? Uh, or you might not be there. You might be in another location remote. Uh, so it's an option. Um, and then beyond that, what's exciting beyond chores as we talk about features is goals. So specifically as a child is accumulating their assets, their kid coins, they can start setting goals. I want to get a new Xbox. I want to get a bike. I mean, particularly financial goals, savings goals in this sense, they can create their buckets and announce it and say, okay, well, I'm going to need, um, X amount. Again, we try to use the kid coin language and then there's a conversion like kid coin to dollars. So it's, um, I need 500 kid coins to get this Xbox. And then the, all the adults that are in that child's network can see the goals that the children have. And the, not only can the child request funding, you know, it's like requesting funding for your venture. They could request funding. The adult can say yes or no and how much they want to help. But the child, as they get allowance and achieve, do their chores and build up assets, they can attribute their own money to that goal. And we can all see their progress and help them celebrate as they actually achieve that savings goal. Then their main parents, the main admins, their parents would get the notice, hey, your child has achieved their savings goal. Now you can choose to redeem it for them. You buy it for them. So it's not like at this point, they're not spending that money directly, the parent has to approve. Great. You got it. I'm going to go ahead and buy you that Xbox or whatever your savings goal was. So that's chores, goals. And then there's a third very cool, and I think this is really a unique differentiator, is um, we have a section, we call it micros, which is short for micro scholarships. And this allows parents and kids to see a whole list of ways they can earn Kid coins or dollars or other prizes, it depends on the sponsor. We allow sponsors, which could be you, Tom Hensky, it could be your company, it could be a big company, it could be any individual or organization can apply to be a sponsor of these micro scholarships and they can determine what the criteria is to earn them. So, for example, um, if you're a local school or educator, you might say any child that gets, you know, a 90 average or above in their computer science class this year, that's between 12 and 16 years old in Jersey City, will get a $20 micro scholarship um, sponsored by, you know, the New Jersey Liberty Science Center, you know, for example. And we have a whole portal and managing who the sponsors are. And then they just offer that up. And it's a chance for kids to earn extra kid coins, dollars, or other rewards for um, performing whatever, whatever positive behavior the sponsor wants to support. 
That's awesome. And so when you're thinking about the ages that would be applicable for this, right? So can you give me a broad range and then can you give me the sweet spot? Absolutely. And it's interesting because in, in looking at, you know, the wonderful uh, programs you've put out over the last year and these, these 12 steps you have, um, some of the topics get a little bit complicated, you know, like taxes and things of that nature. Uh, definitely, you know, for kids that are, I would, I would think a little bit older, right? But some of them are a little more one-on-one. I really believe like the first four steps, I don't have them in front of me, apply to some of the money basics, right? And I really look at our tool as something that could support kids anywhere from four or five years old, all the way up through the age I mentioned, graduating college, essentially, right? So that's the broad range. But I really think our sweet spot is going to be those younger children. These like these formative lessons of habit building, value, money doesn't grow on trees, right? Like I tell my seven-year-old all the time, he thinks, oh, you have money. We can get this only $50. And I'm saying, well, you know what it takes to earn $50? Well, fix your bed every day for, you know, a month, earn those 60 kid coin and then get that thing you think I can just buy by putting a credit card down. And so I believe the ages of four, five years old is a great starting point for our application in particular to about, you know, 10, 12. So that, that before you can get a credit card and go out to a store and buy things on your own, when you're still in the home environment, depending largely on your parents to get you things, this is the ideal time and the place that we're really trying to um, get families involved. So again, it's not just financial lessons. These are like core values and habit building and kind of um, doing, doing the positive things you need to do to get the things you want in life, whether those things cost money or just uh, are rewards like getting screen time, for example, which doesn't technically cost the child money when they want to play for 30 minutes on their device. But in the kid coin world, that can cost something, right? And as I charge my son for it, you know, you got to pay five kid coins for that. So that means it's, it's positive habits and behavior in order to do the thing you want to do. That's awesome. You know, I've been a student of the financial literacy space for probably now 20 years, about the day my son was born, I think I started paying attention to it a little bit more. And I'm laughing hearing you talk about your son, the probably best qualification that you have for doing this is not your tech background, it's that you're a dad, right? Or you're a parent. So I totally get it. So let me ask you this question, without naming names, because I know there are a lot of people trying to get in this space. And a lot of people will say, yeah, 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 I've heard of something just like KidCoin, and they'll insert the name of whatever your quote unquote competitor is. What do you think your unique differentiating factors are from all the other players that are currently in the marketplace trying to accomplish something like you're doing here? Sure. I mean, the first thing I'll say to that, Tom, to be honest, and, and I, I believe you, you share, um, I would think you share part of this mentality with me is it's great that there's people in the space doing things, right? I mean, like what you're doing with this podcast and what you've dedicated uh, your livelihood to, to, to work with families and, and manage their, their overall financial picture of which how they deal with their children and college education is part of it. Uh, some of the ventures that are in the space now that are receiving major, major funding and have customer bases. Frankly, I think that's fantastic. I, I look at this as, an industry that there's going to be room for a number of different players and solutions, not necessarily one size or approach fits all, right? Not every parent might want to quote unquote, pay their children or reward them for doing chores, right? People will have different approaches. So I think it's great that there's different tools. That being said, I do believe that the problem still not solved when we look out there, when we just look at, how much debt people carry, how, you know, children. And again, we always talk about different generations and the millennials, different generations have different mentalities towards money. These are digital natives. Now they, they have a different approach towards how they interact with social media, with value exchange. 
So I believe Kitcoin is a very modern solution that's meeting kind of the needs of modern digital natives and even kind of, dare I say, crypto natives, like these young kids that are growing up with a different sense of money and value exchange. I believe we're ahead of the curve in how we're meeting that with some of our features, um, like the ones I mentioned. Um, we're not yet at any kind of banking application. In the future, we'll consider adding things like prepaid debit cards and, as I mentioned, even crypto, actual real cryptocurrency exchange. Um, but I think once you go down a banking route, you get down a credit route, you become a transactional system, and it's almost like you start potentially serving a different master. Whereas for us, the whole MO is about the education and the core values development at a family level, you know, and that's the way we're looking to even build our revenue model and business model to really serve the family. Regardless, you could be a, a, um, a family that does not have a lot of means. So you can't be giving your kids all kinds of actual money every week. And it doesn't matter. You could use KidCoin for free and just help your young child build values without actually moving any real money through the system. But you're going to help them maybe move on a different track than maybe you were able to because of whatever situation you had growing up. So I do think our differentiator is the fact that we're looking and starting with children from a very young age. And as a non-banking application, we're really not dependent on transactions or, you know, having formal bank accounts and putting real money through the system, because that really deters a lot of people that, that are just trying to put bread on the table for their family. Um, but everyone has a phone and most kids have access to at least an iPad. So we've really kind of gamified. I don't love that word, but I use it in this case. So we've really gamified this process of learning these core life values and skills and as kind of a parenting tool or helping also educate the parents on how they can work with their children to negotiate and set limits on things and build some positive habits. So I think I think those are some of the unique uh, components that we have, this kind of holistic view of the family and the child, and thinking about this as a set of core life skills, not just like, like financial literacy is almost too narrow for what we're looking to achieve. It's, it's, a, it's that and more. And I'll leave it at that. Well, that's a great place to wrap up. You know, I've always told you, you are cutting edge and ahead of the curve. And it's been amazing watching you grow. I love the platform. And I know it's only going to get better from here. So we'll put all of your information, Kid Coins information in the show notes. But thank you so much for joining us today. This was just outstanding. Thank you, my friend. I agree. Take care, Tom. Good luck with everything. Again, great, great job on what you're doing with Total Sense. And, uh, you know, look forward to uh, continuing the conversation. Awesome. Thanks, my friend. Take care. I hope you enjoyed our episode of Total Sense. A special thank you goes out to Verso Studios at the Westport Library. Tune in for our next Money Chat.